Hello everyone. Good morning and welcome to my course Physics 1. This course is generally made for undergraduate level B.Tech degree students. Myself Gopal Chakravarti, Assistant Professor, Department of Physics, Greater Kolkata College of Engineering and Management, Bariyur. You can personally meet me at College Premises, Ground Floor Physics Lab, or you can also send me a mail regarding your query and doubts to my given mail address that is god physics 6 at the rate gmail.com or gopal dot chakravarti underscore gkcem at the rate gis group dot org you can also subscribe my youtube channel for more educational videos i have already uploaded lots of video related to your topic physics one as per markout curriculum so uh, the students you can check those videos to clear your doubt or query Uh, now, the corresponding course pages are www.markoutexam.net or www.markoutwb.ac.in. The syllabus of this subject, Physics 1, is already uploaded in the website. So, uh, you can check the syllabus from there. The corresponding title of the course is Physics 1 and the subject code is BSPH101. Uh, it is under the category of Basic Science course. Uh, it has a credit for um, 3 lecture per week and 1 tutorial per week. So, uh, this course is generally made for undergraduate level BTEC degree students of first year. So, Computer Science, Civil, Mechanical, these departmental students will going to study this course in the odd semester and alternatively Electrical and Electronics departmental students will going to study this course in their even semester. So uh, for them only the subject code will change that will be BSPH201. So uh, for the today's class I'll be your subject teacher. Now uh, today I will going to start a new chapter. So the topic that we are going to cover are wave function, characteristics of wave function, basic postulate of quantum mechanics, probability and probability density, eigenvalue and eigenfunction, and lastly the superposition theorem. So uh, these topics are under the module 4. So this is another new module. So, it is under the chapter Quantum Mechanics. Prerequisites for uh, these uh, topics are Elementary Idea of Physics and Fundamental Idea of Mathematical Calculus. The course objectives are Idea about Quantum Mechanics, Wave Function, Characteristics of Wave Function, probability and probability density and no eigen function eigen value and normalization condition and superposition principle 
the corresponding course outcomes are students will able to know some of the basic laws related to quantum mechanics they will also able to calculate simple quantum mechanical calculation after completion of this course so now uh, before starting that quantum mechanics students you must need to know why you are going to study this chapter or why this kind of mechanics is different from the your well known mechanics that you have already studied uh, that is newtonian mechanics or cl and classical mechanics so uh, first of all in classical physics uh, we can determine the position and momentum of the particle simultaneously for a particular system with the same accuracy by using Newton's laws of motion. So uh, provided its initial position and momentum are known. So the classical physics uh, is the deterministic in nature. In quantum physics or in quantum mechanics uh, when a micro particles say uh, electron proton etc is in a motion so uh, the velocity of micro particle is comparable to the velocity of light its position can be anywhere within a wave packet so this wave packet is extending throughout a region of space hence uh, there will be a uncertainty in specifying the position of the particle. Even we can say from Heisenberg uncertainty principle that uh, if the position of the particle is exactly specified, uh, therefore that means the uncertainty corresponding to the position will be zero. So uh, the momentum of the particle will be completely uncertain as per Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So uh, similarly, uh, the position of the micro particle is completely uncertain for the exact measurement of the momentum. So therefore, corresponding uncertainty in the momentum will be zero. So this would make the description of the particle meaningless. So uh, in quantum mechanics, any physical quantity is described by the probabilistic way by considering a number of allowed values with different probabilities. So thus, the explanation of natural or physical phenomena in terms of quantum physics necessitates the transition from deterministic classical mechanics to a probabilistic quantum physics. So this probabilistic description of uh, the motion of the particle can be expressed by a function and that function is known as wave function. So hopefully uh, it will clear to you now why this mechanics, quantum mechanics is different from your classical mechanics, okay? Now I will explain all the terms that I have told that is wave function, uh, probability, probability density, step by step, okay? So, uh, the wave function, okay? So, this is the very important things. Uh, it is one of the postulate of quantum mechanics that for a physical system consisting of a particle, there is an associated wave function. So, this wave function determines everything that can be known about the system. The wave function is assumed here to be a single valued function of position and time. Since uh, that is sufficient 
to guarantee an unambiguous value of probability of finding the particle at a particular position and time. The wave function may be a complex function since it is the product with its complex conjugate which specifies the real physical probability of finding the particle in a particular state. So this is your wave function. So uh, the wave function is represented with a denoted by psi function of r position and t time. So uh, it is a single valued probability amplitude at that particular time for that particular position. So a uh, psi can be represented as a cos of kx minus omega t or sin kx minus omega t where k is a uh, 2 pi by lambda okay and omega is the angular frequency so omega equals 2 pi nu so uh, these are the relation or expression how you can represent a wave function psi so now i will discuss about the characteristic of a a phenomena or physical significance of this wave function psi. So, uh, as I have told you that the wave function psi of R and T representing the behavior of a moving particle in specified position R and at time T that is must describe it completely. The wave function is large where particle is most likely to be and small elsewhere. In case of one dimensional motion, the wave function psi function of x and t represents the behavior of the particle at position x and time t. This implies that the magnitude of psi is large for certain specified values of x and t where the particle is most likely to be found and uh, shy, the mod of psi the magnitude is small at certain specified values of x and t where the probability of finding the particle is less so uh, it is one of the postulate of quantum mechanics that uh, for a physical system consisting of a particle there is an associated wave function. This wave function determines everything that can be known about the system. The wave function is assumed here to be a single valued function of position and time. Since uh, that is in sub that is sufficient to guarantee an unambiguous value of probability of finding the particle at particular position and time. So uh, uh, the characteristic of wave function that are these are the main characteristic that is the wave function is a mathematical function that represent the space time behavior of each quantum mechanical particle. The function must be single valued, continuous and finite. The wave function is always square integrable function. The magnitude of psi function of position and time is large in the region where the probability of finding the particle is high and is small in the region where the probability of finding it is low. Hence, the wave function measures the probability of the particle around a position. So, uh, these are the basic characteristics of wave function psi. Now, uh, as I have already discussed that uh, the some physical 
significance of wave functions are the wave function shy presents the behavior of a moving particle in specified position of position and time so uh, the wave function value must be large where the particle most likely to be and the small elsewhere so uh, in case of one dimensional motion the wave function shy represents the behavior of the particle at position x and time t okay so uh, this thing I don't want to repeat uh, I have already explained all these things the physical significance of wave function now uh, probability since shy of xt is complex quantity it cannot have any direct physical meaning but shy star that is complex conjugate of shy so shy star a to shy that will be shy mod square is the real positive quantity since the probability of finding a particle at x and t is also real and positive we can take mod of shy square as measure of probability density so uh, thus the wave function uh, which is a solution of a Schrodinger equation must be such that um, shy star into shy that mod of these two product of these two square d cube of r represent the probability of finding the particle in a volume element d cube r at that time t so there are some limitations of wave function shy so it is as it is a word behave function the most important limitations of wave function shy function of r and t are as follows that is shy function of r that can be represented as equals to shy x y and z be finite for all values of x y and z the second one shy that is a function of position must be square integrable so that mod of shy star shy whole square is finite shy of r must be continuous everywhere except where the potential v uh, is a function of position that will be tends to infinity and the fourth one that partial derivative that means del shy del x or del shy del y or del shy del z that all quantity must be continuous for all values of x y and z so if a wave function shy satisfy all the above condition it is called a wave behaved function uh, now uh, you have to know what are the basic postulates of quantum mechanics because uh, the in quantum mechanics the shy wave function is the most important thing that can be represent the space time behavior of any moving particle or any kind of dynamical variable here that can be considered as an operator or function and when we try to find out what is the position of the particle where the particle will be uh, so uh, that will be always calculated by in terms of probability okay so uh, before proceeding you need to know what are the basic postulate of quantum mechanics okay first i will describe this then i will explain uh, so the following sir the basic postulate of quantum mechanics that uh, for a moving particle the same space time behavior can be completely described by a wave function shy which itself is a function of position and time consistent with the heisenberg uncertainty principle second one the as i have told you already that dynamical variables as like position vector linear momentum vector angular momentum vector energy this etc which describing the motion of the particle 
can be represented by some mathematical operator. So these operators are linear and Hermitian. The result of measurement of a dynamical variable A where are the eigenvalues of an operator capital A cap of an eigenvalue equation. So uh, A cap psi in that is equal to small a in psi of n dash. So here uh, psi n is a eigen function of the operator a cap belonging to a eigenvalue small a n. The probability of finding the particle that can be uh, represented by uh, rho that is equals to psi star psi that means complex conjugate and uh, that multiplied by the actual wave function which will give you the mod of psi square that means the square of the magnitude of wave function psi. The probability of finding the particle in a given volume space is volume integral rho dv that is equals to volume integral mod of psi square dv. Since the particle must be found somewhere in space the total probability must be unity. So uh, it is the integration limiting minus infinity to infinity mod of psi square dv that should be equals to 1 where the integration is taken all over the space and the expectation value of the result of a large number of measurements of a physical property alpha of the particle is given by uh, within bracket alpha that is equals to integration limiting from minus infinity to infinity shyster alpha cap shy tv so alpha cap is a operator relating to the dynamical variable alpha and shy is normalized so uh, in next part i will discuss in details what is the normalization condition or normalization factor so here the expectation value of alpha within bracket that can be written as integration minus infinity to infinity psi star alpha psi cap dv whole divided by integration minus infinity to infinity psi star psi dv so uh, these are the basic postulate of quantum mechanics uh, now the second part that is probability and probability density so as I have already told you that in case of quantum mechanics uh, you cannot measure the position and both the position and momentum of the particle simultaneously uh, at a particular time as per Heisenberg uncertainty principle. So that means if you are able to measure the position accurately so the position will uh, the momentum will be uncertain or if if you measure the momentum with a hundred percent accuracy so position will be uncertain so uh, by this so you how can you define the particle define the position of the particle or where it will be a particular uh, boundary how you will find out that uh, so you need to know what is the probability because by the term probability or probability density you can define that position of the particle that means you can say yes the particle will be the chance of getting the particle will be there that may be maximum or minimum so probability means basically it's the chance of getting the particle of whether it may be maxima or whether it may be minima that thing you can only find out so uh, for probability when it will be maximum so that means chance of the getting the particle is maximum so that probability density that value will be equals to one and if it is zero that means the probability is very less chance of the getting the particle is very less okay so i will define or describe the, what is probability and probability density now 
ओके सो द प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी द प्रोबेबिलिटी डेंसिटी ऑफ अ पार्टिकल इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ फाइंडिंग द पार्टिकल पर यूनिट वॉल्यूम ऑफ अ गिवन स्पेस एट अ पर्टिकुलर टाइम it is generally expressed as the product of normalized wave function and its complex conjugate so the probability density can be written as rho equals to chi star into chi that is mod of chi square this is the relation between the wave function chi of a particle in a given state and the probability per unit volume of finding the particle in a given state so the probability that the particle will be found in a volume element dv uh, that is chi star chi dv since the particle must be somewhere in space the total probability capital p to the find the particle in space should be equals to 1 so capital p will be equals to 1 for getting its maximum so uh, in other one in one dimensional case the probability of locating the particle with a distance dx that can be represented as p dx that is equals to chi star chi dx so probability will be maximum so that value integration minus infinity to infinity chi star chi dv that should be equals to 1 and the probability is minimum that means that value will be equals to 0 okay now the eigen function and eigen value as i have told you that in case of quantum mechanics all the derivable quantity derivable function that also as a operator so is a it may be a position may be a momentum may be a energy also a uh, operator so here if a if a operator a cap operating on a wave function chi or here that i have considered u which itself is a function of position x so multiplies u of x by a constant small a then u of x is called eigen function uh i can means so proper okay so that function of a cap belonging to a given value small a so for a particular operator capital a cap there is a set of eigen value small a n and a set of eigen function is defined by capital a cap u in function of x that is equals to a suffix n small a suffix n and u suffix n function of x so a n is the eigen value and u uh, n is the eigen function so if u uh, 1 function of x u 2 function of x up to u n function of x are the solutions of the schrodinger equation belong is to the same energy then their linear combination is u function of x that can be written as uh, summation of n u n of x so uh, is also a solution of schrodinger equation belonging to the same energy states so these are the eigen value and eigen function uh, now the last one that is superposition principle so we know uh, that the wave function chi represents the actual states of the system this system may have different possible allowed states the superposition principle states that if any schrodinger differential equation that must be linear one has several solution like uh, chi 1 chi 2 chi 3 etc then the linear combination of these solutions with different coefficient is also a solution of that schrodinger equation so chi can be written as chi equals to small a1 chi1 small a2 chi2 plus small a3 chi3 plus dot 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 that means it can be written as summation of small n a suffix n chi suffix n where a n is the coefficient of corresponding state chi n this implies that the actual states of the system 
is a linear combination of these allowed states uh, with different coefficients. So here the wave functions are normalized and the functions are orthogonal to each other. The probability of finding the system in a particular state, say psi 1, will depend on its corresponding coefficient small a1. Thus, the probability of finding the particle of the system in that state, psi 1, is mod of small a1 square. Okay. So uh, now I will show you a one or two problem on that term, that eigenvalue or eigenfunction, and show that it will be very easier for you to understand how you will calculate this eigenvalue or eigenfunction. Okay, uh, so here is the first problem. So the first problem states that a wave function, which is quantum, uh, is in quantum state psi 1, psi 2, psi 3, psi 4, and psi 5 is given by psi 1 equals to uh, 1 by under root 3 psi 1 plus 1 by under root 3 psi 2 plus 1 by under root 6 psi 3 and 1 by under root 24 psi 4 plus 1 by under root 8 psi 5. So what is the probability of the system uh, being in the state uh, given by psi 5? And what is the total probability? That so as I have told you that how will uh, find out the probability of that particular corresponding state. So uh, the probability of that corresponding state will be the mod of coefficient square. Okay, here as you are asked to find out the what is the probability for psi 5 state. So for fifth state, the coefficient is, you can check, it is 1 by under root 8, so, okay? So uh, your probability will be 1 by under root 8 whole square, so that will be equal to 1 by 8. So similarly, as you were asked to find out the total probability of that system, uh, of that given wave function psi, so total probability means you have to take, the, you have to calculate the sum of all the coefficient square that will give you the total probability. So here you can substitute that value, total probability will be 1 by under root 3 whole square plus again 1 by under root 3 whole square plus 1 by under root 6 whole square plus 1 by 24 under root 24 whole square plus 1 by under root 8 whole square. So if you calculate all these things that value will give you of one, that means uh, you can say that total probability of that system is given, that is given by one, that means you can also say, uh, you can also describe that as the probability is one, that means here the chance of getting the particle is maximum, okay? So by this way you can find out the probability of that corresponding state. Second problem. Uh, the, the ground state and the excited state normalized wave function of an atom are psi 0 and psi 1 respectively. The corresponding energy being E0 and E1. If the probability of finding the atom in the ground state is 90% and that of the excited state is 10%, then find the average energy of the atom also to determine the normalized wave function. So, uh, this is very important question and uh, you will find this question can already come to your semester exam for last many, so many times for your last 10 years to last 10 years or 5 years, okay? So, how you solve? Uh, here the state of the particle will be generated due to the superposition of two states, psi0 and psi1. So, suppose the normalized and orthogonal wave function of this atom is psi. So, psi can be Present as uh, C not psi not plus C one psi psi one. C not and C one are the coefficient of the corresponding states. So uh, it, this can be uh, now written in for a spa normalization condition that is volumetrication psi psi, psi dv that is equals to one. So if you substitute the value, that will give you. Uh, she not star, shy not star, plus C1 star, shy 1 star, whole into within whole bracket, C not shy not plus C1 shy 1 of dv that is equal to 1. So uh, as the C not star, C not uh, integration, shy not star, shy not dv plus C1 star, C1 
1 material psi 1 star psi 1 dB is equals to 1. So, um, C naught star C1 for integration psi naught star psi 1 dV and C1 star C naught integration psi 1 star psi dV are individually zero due to the orthogonal property of this wave function. So, uh, C naught star C naught plus C1 star C1 equals to 1. So, uh, from there, C naught star C naught, that means C naught square plus C one square, that is equals to one, as C naught and C and C one are two real uh, constant. So, uh, from there, as we know, the probability of finding the particle in state, psi naught and psi one are C naught square and C1 square respectively, thus we can write from the given condition that uh, C0 square equals to 0 0.9 and C1 square equals to 0 0.1. Thus the normalized wave function can be written as psi equals to point zero under root 0 0.9 psi0 plus under root 0 0.1 psi. And the second one, the probability to be found to an atom in the energy state E, the average energy of the atom will be equal to E average that is equal to summation of n uh, Pn En. So in this case, E average that will be equal to 0 0.9 E0 plus 0 0.1 E1. Uh, these are the important books uh, you can refer. Uh, so the evaluation process are same. You have to appear for the external in semester exam of 70 marks and internal exam for uh, 30 marks. Okay. So uh, all of you have understand and enjoyed today's class because uh, you you just go through this class once again in details because uh, in next class I will explain the normalization condition, normalization factor, orthogonal factor, orthogonal condition expectation value and we will also calculate or some uh, we solve some numericals on that topic okay so uh, thank you for this attending today's class thanks again